so you already know it's your boy Wonka and I'm about to make another video this time I'm gonna review the go home show to Wrestlemania 19 on Raw this was the 24th of March 2003 now in many ways you can consider this to be on its way to the beginning of the end although that's a word in terms of wrestling has been thrown around a lot. When did it all get fucked up? 19, 20, 21, 22. A lot of those WrestleManias kind of illustrated what I like about the Ruthless Aggression arc. Or that era. Of course, it's a little longer than that. But... There were a lot of dream matches, a lot of rivalries in these big four pay-per-views, and even the minor filler pay-per-views like Backlash that essentially showed matches that we wanted to see, but we never got a chance to see them, especially Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was facing everybody we wanted to see him face except for The Rock. But I guess you can say that that was the worst part of Ruthless Aggression. The fact that Austin and Rock left, so they never got to see much of those dream matches. They kind of bounce. Now, jumping into it, it starts off with Lily and Garcia singing the Star Set Bangle Banner. Lily and Garcia being very patriotic, and I guess kind of explains why she took off WWE since 2009 all the way up to like early 2012 or late 2011 to like do her singing career. She did a good job. I thought the performance was okay. Actually, fuck that. That was a great performance. And you know, I'm a big fan of music, so for me to say something like that, that means that this person's legit good. And she did a great job. She didn't try to overdo it like most people do it when they do the Star Spangled Banner. She knew when to belt. She knew when to go high. She tried to add flavor to it, but not over spice it. So it feels like you're eating the spices and not just spicing up a good song. That's the way to describe like. You know, some people overdo the vibrato and other vocal techniques, and it feels like more like you're listening to that rather than the song, and it kind of overdoes it. But yeah, she did it very well. Yeah, this is a fucking wrestling show, so I shouldn't start going American Idol all of a sudden. But then Stone Cold Steve Austin shows up. He's a little pissed. Fox's been doing him dirty. He wants, he wants to meet up with him right now. He doesn't give a fuck about the concert. He wants some shit right now. And essentially that's not what he gets. Instead, Eric Bischoff brings up the security, these bunch, these fucking rent cops I call them that because they ain't shit. But still, he says, all right, you got a restraining order for today. You're not allowed to be in this building. Austin's like, you know what, fuck it. I mean, I've stunned a bunch of cops before. It's not the first time, so, you know what? What do I have left to prove? I'm just gonna, like, walk out. Alright. I'll do what you tell me. That's when I feel like WWE suffers from, like, amnesia a lot of time. We've seen this guy deck some fucking... He fucked the system over, and those are real cops, not these fucking county sheriff niggas. These fucking bitch niggas that I, I'm not even intimidated by them if they like show up on my face, trying to tase me, not suck my dick. All right, all right. And of course, he has a later role. He's sort of like he's chilling outside inside Eric Bischoff's car, and Bischoff ain't too pleased about that. And that's kind of what the overall theme of the show is. Austin just like. Chilling in the back. And Bishop doesn't know what to do with him. Because, yeah, he's out there. He's not in He's not in the fucking ring. The whole time I'm thinking, why can't you just 
send if we're gonna send the po po to get him out, why can't you send him to like keep him away from Eric Bischoff's property? Cause that shit that was his fucking car, right? That was not Austin's car, um, wasn't it? Uh, maybe I'm confused. Alright, first match. Jeff Hardy and Trish Stratus versus... What's his face? I don't remember this nigga. Victoria. I know it's Victoria because she had that psycho gimmick. Oh, Stevie Richards. I kind of feel like... I mean, I know who he is, but I didn't fucking recognize him. Anyway, so this is sort of like setting up to the Divas match, which is a triple threat between Trish Stratus, Victoria, and Jacqueline Moore. Yeah, it's the black girl that's really big. Not Shaniqua from SmackDown, not her. But, because she ain't ratchet, Jack one's actually kind of classy. She's the classy big lady. But anyway, the match itself was really short. As a mixed tag team match, it was a very creative. It did a lot. It was very fast paced. I didn't feel like I was going to fall asleep watching this shit. But there you go. It was a... Quick match, you they were like making out near the end, but while they were doing it, then the big black lady fucking hits. Was it big black lady? Well, one of the girls fucking decks the shit out of Trish. So she gets hit from behind, essentially. Alright, I mean, you snooze, you lose. She wanted to make out with Jeff Hardy and is all emo sexiness and she forgets that these bitches is acting up so she gets decked. This is what happens. Up next, uh fucking Christian, my favorite mid carters versus Scott Steiner. I fucking hate Scott Steiner. I don't like him. He made Raw in two thousand three suck a little more. He made fucking WCW back in its final year, 2000-2001, suck a little more. And he ain't doing too good on TNA either. So I, I don't even know why this guy's winning world titles. This nigga deserves to fucking die. I hate him. I fucking hate him. He's just everything I hate about wrestling... He's just like, he looks like he's going to die at every fucking match of a heart attack. Like, this ring shit ain't built for him. Every time I see him walk, move, or do anything, I feel like he could collapse at any second. If this guy comes up to my face, I won't be intimidated just because he's brolic. Because he looks like he can have a heart attack right before he decks me. Damn. He just, he just looks, he just looks horrible. All swollen, but fucking like he he's like falling apart every time he fucking walks. He's like every old brawler guy's injury combined. Kevin Nash, Triple H, damn, and his matches suck. But you know what? The squash match with Christian, he gave Christian a chance. He gave him some opportunities to like look good. Christian was. Capitalizing a lot on Big Papa Punk, imitating him and shit, mocking him, making him look like a bitch nigga. Like, hey, you thought you were going to get a squash match out of me? But of course, because it is a squash match, Big Papa Punk gets his victory. Christian gets his ass beat, and that's about it. And then he says a few lines in the end to get the crowd hype. I ain't even going to lie. I was feeling that. You know what, as much as I dislike him, it was a squash match and made him look good. The future main eventer guy beat the mid-carter. So all this is good and shit. And Christian was like, 
Christian was mid Carter, but he wasn't like fucking in your face mid Carter. He wasn't like Edge or some shit. So it was like it didn't violate. It was good booking. Okay. Now then we have Triple H and Ric Flair versus Booker T and Goldust. I like the segments with Booker T and Goldust. I feel like they're a very interesting tag team. Their contrast in their personalities. The fact that I can basically understand that they've been together through thick and thin. That some interesting fucking characters actually. And just the idea that WrestleMania 19, the World Heavyweight Championship match, had Booker T in it. You gotta understand, this was the first WrestleMania World Heavyweight Championship match. This is the first one. This is the first one where the brand slip split actually like comes into play, where you have. SmackDown is its own brand and Raw is its own brand. With Raw having the World Heavyweight Championship, we got Triple H versus Booker T. I'm a big Booker T fan. And, you know, I, I was supposed to feel this match, but I actually fell asleep watching it. Why? Because you got Triple H, who's also like, he's inconsistent. He's hit or miss, in my opinion. He either does something really great or really sucky. And in this case, I fell asleep watching it. But my man Booker T, my favorite wrestler, got the win. I thought that was great. And then there's like this big promo where Ric Flair was saying, this is kind of like the match to Sennery. Um, and then he kind of like, Cheers like Triple H or something after that loss or something. I mean, I don't know what he said in the... What exactly Ric Flair said in the fucking post-match to Triple H while he was on the floor. But it was supposed to be encouraging, I think. I don't know, because I just woke up after that. Like, when Schlag Daddy tells us about Triple H-itis and how we can, like, fall asleep... Watching his promos, I didn't get it at first, but now I get it. This nigga, anything he does, it's either going to be really exciting or really fucking boring. Same goes for his match against Kevin Nash back in 2011. Fucking hit or miss shit. Alright. And another thing that was set up very well was RVD versus the Dudley Boys. See, Rob Van Dam and Kane... Well, it was RVD and Kane versus Dudley Boys. RVD and Kane were are like this contrasted tag team. It's like, they don't work well, but Kane and RVD both got really... They were really over back then, where nowadays, not so much. So, they were basically really over. They were made a great tag team. And later on, especially in Survivor Series, that tag team led to... Something different. Some sort of feud that changed Kane's character for a long fucking time. And RVD's character. So I feel like even now on the way to WrestleMania, it's more than just this. So that's fucking cool. They think for the future. And this match was really good. After falling asleep from the last one, I was enjoying this. And definitely the fact that they went to WrestleMania right after this, that this was sort of their way of becoming number one contenders for the tag team championship. That's fucking awesome. So, there you go. That was all the matches for this Raw. I'm about to get a part two where I go through two or three of the segments. Depending on how I feel about it. It's either going to be two or I'm going to go through the SmackDown segment. Hope you guys watch that part. I'm going to be putting that shit up pretty soon. And next video, I'll say suck my dick. Alright? Alright. Until then, bitches.